I'm going to tell you guys which legends are good at every single rank in Apex and why. I will give each legend two ranks. One for their power in the lower ranks, bronze to plat, and one for their power in the higher ranks, diamond to pred. I'll do this in order to give you the best informed decision of how you can rank up no matter your rank. Let's start with the bottom of the barrel, D tier. There is no one in D tier. Literally every legend is viable in Apex, no matter what your level of play, no matter what rank you're at. Unless you're trying to run Mirage in a comp lobby, you're going to be fine. Let's explain why. At bronze to plat, individual carry potential is greatly increased. However, in saying that, that makes teamwork something you should be actively pursuing even further. Because you'll need that teamwork in order to mitigate the likelihood that a single high skill player runs straight through your team. At higher ranks, individual carry potential decreases, and so teamwork, once again, becomes absolutely fundamental to your success. Alright, C tier. Let's get things started with Maggie, who I'd place in C tier for bronze to plat, and B tier for diamond to pred. Maggie's tactical is solid, enabling her to deny enemy reses behind cover or behind protection like Gibby Dome, though it does have to be placed quite precisely as the AoE cone isn't huge. She can also push enemies out of cover in a duel or occasionally get the final blow when someone escapes behind a door. Overall, solid ability, but nothing extraordinary and does require some aiming. Her passive is nothing to write home about, it's okay, highlights the enemy for a brief period after shooting them. You'll often barely notice it and it doesn't bring much to her kit. Her ultimate, Wrecking Ball, doesn't have a hamster in it, but it is about as useful as Hammond on a push map. I've put her in C tier for the lower ranks because to be used effectively she does require some coordination from teammates and precision aiming, which is going to be easier if you're already a higher skill player or you're playing with the squad. Crypto. I've placed Crypto in C tier for Bronze to Plat and B tier for Diamond to Pred. Not a lot to say about Crypto. Drone comes out, Drone does some recon, Drone goes back in. He has a unique ability to scan upcoming zones without having to physically be on the scanning beacon, which is huge in comp, but otherwise the majority of his kit power comes from his ultimate. It's a strong AoE shield breaker, but requires great timing and teammate coordination. Hence the C tier for lower ranks. And, as your game sense for when to activate his ult increases and the likelihood of teammate coordination goes up, so too will the value you get out of Crypto. Ash. I've placed Ash in C tier for Bronze to Plat and A tier for Diamond to Pred. Ash's tactical is mediocre at best. It moves very slowly and only has one charge. You can prevent people from picking angles with it and occasionally catch someone if they're not looking your way. However, most of its use is going to come from indoors, close range fights, but the likelihood of you snaring someone becomes much higher. Her passive is quite useful for finding out where teams have rotated to, so you know if you're safe, or to charge on ahead if you're looking for a fight. Ash's ultimate is quite straightforward, but an extremely effective tool for instantly repositioning yourself or your team, or chasing to secure a kill. Overall, Ash is a solid legend, but she really requires smart ultimate use to get the most value out of her kit. If you aren't using her ultimate well, she brings very little value to the team. Hence the C tier at lower ranks, but a high value legend at A tier and diamond and beyond. Pathfinder. I've placed Parthy in C tier for bronze to plat and B tier for diamond to pred, with the notable exception that he is somewhat niche in higher ranks. Parthy's grapple is an iconic Apex Legends ability and offers a lot of utility and fast movement around the map. It can be extremely useful in fights for fast repositioning, quickly getting out to high ground or yeeting away to escape. His passive, while not utilized to a greater extent by most players, potentially offers a greatly reduced zipline cooldown late game if you snatch enough beacons along the way. This can result in an absolute jungle of ziplines late game and multiple escape slash entry routes for your team, though this scenario is slightly more niche and often not a reality. Pathfinder's zipline offers a means of fast traversal about the map, however, on the new map, Broken Moon, there is already a rail system which shuttles players around the map extremely quickly, and as a result, Pathfinder's zipline loses value here. Overall, Parthy is a solid pick with amazing movement potential, but at times he's let down by his fridge-sized hitbox and the alternative traversal options available instead of his zipline. Catalyst. C tier in bronze to plat and B tier in diamond to bread. The tuning of Catalyst kit feels a little underwhelming at the moment. She has a great foundation in terms of what her abilities actually do, but the execution in terms of tuning isn't quite there yet. Her Q slows enemies and deals a very low amount of ticking dot damage to them. Great for 1v1s around cover and for blocking or slowing lanes where the enemy intends to push. These very fluid blobs do not have a time limit and so will stay there until destroyed or a new one is thrown. 
This leads to one of the biggest strengths of Catalyst's abilities, in that she can play around the hitbox of her Ferro Fluid. In the center of the fluid is the hitbox, which has a whopping 300-ish health, so you can use it like a caustic barrel or rampart wall, playing behind it so it soaks damage and popping out either side to destroy your opponent. This is something very few people know, so use it to your advantage. Her passive is probably the strongest aspect of her kit, allowing you to fortify doors with black sh leading to them taking twice as many hits to break. She can also place a barrier in the space where doors have been after they've been destroyed. This allows you to further fortify your position in a teamfight or slow down chasing enemies to escape. Catalyst's ultimate, Dark Veil, throws up a huge opaque wall, allowing you to block off sightlines from powerful positions that the enemy is holding, or even block the vision of an incoming third party squad. All players, however, can still shoot through the wall. It does block most scans, but if a target is pinged before the wall goes up, they will remain highlighted for a short time even through the veil. If enemies attempt to pass through the wall, they'll be slowed for a short duration and exposed. Her ultimate has a 2 minute cooldown, and so will be up for most fights. It's the sort of ability that can really reward a thoughtful player. Overall, because of her need for calculated ability placement, I feel that she isn't particularly lower rank friendly, and will provide greater relative benefit to the team at a higher rank. Vantage, C tier in bronze to plat, and B, maybe A tier in diamond to bread. Her tactical ability provides some escapability and overall movement utility. However, the range on it isn't particularly long, and you are somewhat vulnerable while flying, especially after you've reached the bird and decelerate. Her passive, Spotter's Lens, allows you to see to what degree your bullets will drop over a given distance, indicated by a marker on your screen when you're scoped in. It provides minimal utility and often goes unnoticed, as once you're very familiar with the gun, you'll have an excellent feel for bullet drop at all ranges anyway. The greater benefit and somewhat secret power of her passive is that it allows you to get detailed info on the character you're scoping in at. It tells you what character they're playing, how far they are from you, and vitally, what shield that player and their squad are wearing. This allows you to plan your attack a little more and decide whether it's worth it for you to make the push. Vantage's ultimate provides some good long range poke as well as the potential to quickly delete a player with 2-3 to three shots from afar. Though this obviously requires some pretty damn solid aiming and bullet leading skills so it's not always going to come off. The 15% damage increase for your team on marked targets is noticeable but not extremely impactful. We are now into the B tier. Our first legend in B tier, the Edge Lord himself, Revenant. B tier in bronze to plat but C tier in Diamond to Pred. Revenant has a lot more potential at the early ranks as his abilities can provide a huge advantage when the enemy doesn't know how to respond. His Q is a flashbang slash silence wombo combo that is going to have little Timmy's eyes spinning as he screams into the mic, pressing buttons, while nothing works. This combination is deadly, and because of the insane amount of visual noise it brings, can be really deadly in close quarters. But it can be really deadly for you as well. Revenant's passive allows him to climb really high. Okay, Revenant's ultimate is super good at lower ranks, granting whoever uses it a second life. However, this life is fairly short lived after its nerfs, and it makes a pretty loud noise when it's activated. Plus, it does only offer 100 additional HP. Skilled players will have Revenant players back at their totem in seconds, but for those who aren't prepared, three Revbots climbing over a wall as they scream and hit fire to death is extremely effective. Revenant isn't a bad legend, but once players are experienced going against him, his power drops off considerably. Oh, and you can crouch walk speedy as well. Watson, B tier in bronze to plat, and B slash A tier in diamond to pred. Watson is a weird one. On one hand, you have a legend that can fortify a building like no other, combine this with other defensive legends like Catalyst and Caustic, and all of a sudden you have a nearly impenetrable fortress. If you can get to the fortress in the first place. I don't have a whole lot to say about Watson. You guys know her, know what she does, and know how she performs. She can excel in lower ranks as players will more often try to push into your base, not realizing just how powerful she can be on her home turf. This advantage drops off as you move into higher ranks, but begins to accelerate again in other areas, like a team's increased ability for teamwork and safety in rotations as players become more skilled. Overall, for what's in the current meta, I believe she sits in a solid B tier for both the early and the later ranks. The new map has plenty of buildings and cover to play around, so Watson's agoraphobia shouldn't be an issue. Rampart, B tier in bronze to plat, and B tier in diamond to pred. Rampart's tactical allows her to place up to 5 barriers at any given time, 
She provides solid area control, a nice little damage amp, and a pretty meaty health pool for her barricades. The fact that she can set them up anywhere can also make her great for traversing open spaces or reacting quickly to third parties to provide protection for your team. Her tactical provides a 25% reload speed increase and a 15% mag size increase to any and all LMGs that she uses. A sizable bonus and definitely not something to overlook. If you're playing Rampart, you should be running an LMG. Rampart's ultimate pulls out a minigun that does insane DPS but has a small ramp up time. It can put in work if you're late to a fight or third partying, the key being that you're not the focus of the enemy players as you move slowly with it out and will be bursted down pretty damn quickly. It also requires sharp aim. Duh, you say. It's a gun like any other. No, seriously. If you can't hit your shots in the first few seconds, you're going to have drawn the enemy fire by that point or they're going to have run to cover. You need to whip it out, lock on, and start pissing. The King himself, Mirage. B tier, at bronze to plat, and C tier, the diamond to pred. Mirage is king. I love Mirage. Both he and Fuse are probably my favorite legends. But he has an unorthodox kit. Mirage is all about himself, both personality-wise and ability-wise. He's a deceiver, a trickster, and a really fun legend to master. His passive is solid and can result in successful resurrections a lot more than people think. It's not always easy to find the invisible res, and often, the only player that is looking for it is the player who got the down in the first place. So if that player is intercepted, far away, or isn't able to attempt to prevent the res, there's a very good chance that you're going to get it off. This is especially true when a third party is coming through. They'll have no idea to the exact location of the res, but you better hope you've got a plan when you stand up. Overall, he offers a lot of outplay potential and is great in short to mid-range 1v1s and even 1v2s. But he drops off at higher ranks. Not because people don't shoot his decoy. Trust me, they do. It will buy you time in nearly every circumstance. But because he doesn't bring a lot to the team. Instead, just brings stuff for himself. Lifeline. B tier in bronze to plat, but C tier in diamond to pred. Lifeline's passive is where almost all of her power lies. The ability to resurrect a teammate without being locked into an animation. This allows her to provide cover and support for her team whilst her drone sucks your teammate back to life. Unfortunately, this is about where her power ends. Her tactical offers a helpful health regeneration boost, freeing you up to juice back up your shield. For the drone to heal, you must not be taking damage and it takes a brief moment to pull out and activate it, so its actual applications become somewhat limited. Her ultimate is a free gear upgrade once every three and a half minutes, but who really wants to stop and loot even more? She can excel in lower ranks, where those hands-free, fast resurrections can come in clutch against hesitant or non-pushing opponents. But as you begin to climb, you'll find she is easily countered and doesn't offer a whole lot to the team. Octane. B tier in bronze to plat, and B tier in diamond to pred. Octane. Everyone knows Octane the most popular pick of legend almost entirely since his release. Runs fast, talks fast, simple kit. I see a lot of people underestimate his power though. Listen closely, because this is where Octane really excels and he does it better than almost every other hero. Taking advantage of outgoing damage. Octane absolutely excels in the hands of a player who can immediately stim onto an enemy and capitalize on either your own or your teammates outgoing damage. He is able to instantly dive onto a weak target like no other hero can. So focus up, keep your game sense and awareness sharp, and stim onto people with a shotgun or SMG in hand, and they'll be dead before they can even start their bat. Loba. B tier in bronze to plat, and B tier in diamond to pred. Loba is a solid all-round legend. She has a fairly versatile movement ability with her Q. A pretty cool on paper, but slightly underwhelming in effect passive of being able to see purple and gold loot through walls within about 100 meters. And an absolute beast of an ultimate, which allows her and her teammates to suck up what is effectively as much ammo as she wants, no matter where she goes on the map, as well as grabbing a couple pieces of loot each time she places it. If you're unsure of who to choose on this list or who you want to play next, Loba is an excellent, safe, middle ground legend with an easy to use kit and you'll have very thankful teammates. Wraith, B tier, bronze to plat and B tier in diamond to bread. Wraith holds a special place in many Apex players hearts and yet she hasn't seen a resurgent into the meta for some time now. While she still has a tiny hitbox, making her quite difficult to reliably hit compared to most of the other legends, her delayed phase shift and her short range ultimate leave her fairly wanting. 
Opacity provides an interesting benefit in that it warns you when you're being targeted by an enemy. Yet I feel that this passive is inconsistent in its function, often activates too late, and that there is an internal cooldown in its functioning. Overall, Wraith definitely isn't bad, but to get the most out of her, you need to see the damage coming and use preventative tacticals, not tacticals just for escape, as well as make the most of that tiny hitbox and strafe randomly, quickly, and plenty of crouching. Gibraltar. B tier in bronze to plat and A slash S tier in diamond to pred. Gibby has been in the meta for a very long time, but unlike Wraith, he has maintained his position there into the current day, despite many nerfs over the years. The fact that he has an invincible bubble he can throw for protection on a reasonably short cooldown is a major part of the reason for this. His passive is also extremely useful with just a 9 second cooldown. You can essentially strap a white armor to your arm to absorb 50 damage. This makes poking enemy teams much more risk-free and enables you to add to his already gigantic effective health pool in teamfights and duels. Gibby's ult doesn't fall behind either. Every single part of his kit is useful and powerful for its own reasons, unlike many of the other legends that we've covered so far. It is an amazing zoning tool and put out some insane damage with the right RNG or thrown in the right location. And it can completely shut down an enemy push. Overall, you can't really go wrong with a Gibby pick, but do be warned, his hitbox is huge to make up for his powerful abilities. So despite the fact that he receives less damage inherently from being a tank, he can still melt pretty quickly if you waddle into the wrong place. We are now into the A tier. Fuse. A tier in bronze to plat and A tier in diamond to pred. Fusey boy, my boy Fuse, I love him. Fuse is an absolute beast in the right hands. He provides a massive amount of area denial and poke. His Q can dish out a serious amount of damage over the course of a game, especially if you're sticking it to the enemy. It can break doors, deny space, and late game do hundreds of damage per charge if you place it onto a squad that's stacked into a small area. Fuse's passive is also insane. He can carry literally double the amount of grenades relative to every other legend. This only further propagates his ability to deny space or completely decimate a team that is crowded into a tight area. Fuse's ultimate is definitely his weak point, from unreliable tick damage and damage registration to exceptionally long time to become active on the ground. It doesn't feel great to use and often misses the mark in terms of what you want it to do. It also is difficult to use indoors, try it, I dare you, and doesn't cover that large of an area. If Respawn can fiddle around and figure out the hit registration on the fire and shorten the time it takes between fire and the ability to when the fire becomes active on the ground, he could easily move up to S tier. Caustic, A tier in bronze to plat and A tier in diamond to bread. Caustic has been a powerful legend for a very long time now. His barrels, despite being destroyable, even once activated now, are still extremely powerful. He provides excellent area control and zoning for you and your team. Plus, enemies are highlighted once they are in your gas, whether that be barrel gas or your ultimate gas. He's also completely immune to his own gas and so can move unhindered through it easily, killing highlighted enemies. Overall, he's a very solid legend and possibly the best defensive legend in the game right now. Bangalore. A tier in bronze to plat, B tier in diamond to pred. Bangalore. What's she doing up here, you're probably asking. There's no way she's A tier. Let me tell you, from bronze to plat and honestly often even higher, her smoke slash speed combo is an absolute menace. Combine that with a digi threat and suddenly you've got a legend who can put up a complete LOS destroying wall of smoke and with a simple right click she can see right through the whole thing. While all scans can reveal through the smoke, you either won't have to deal with one or you wait out the scan and then you make your move. Her ultimate is a weak point by far and is often not even worth using as the tide of a fight can shift extremely quickly and may prevent you from turning things around and pushing onto a damaged or downed enemy. Use it sparingly and use it with caution. Valkyrie, A tier in bronze to plat and A tier in diamond to bread. Valkyrie is possibly the only legend since release who has not only stayed in the meta but been a powerful top tier legend that entire time. Her tactical cluster missile has been nerfed over time but still provides some solid poke damage and a short duration stun. This ability was once god tier but it's been brought back to earth and now sits as an excellent but not overpowered part of her kit. Her passive is pretty good, allowing her to slowly fly about, taking high ground or getting info, but it's her ultimate that has been where she really shines. Despite nerfs over the past year, it is still extremely useful and provides you and your team the ability to get out of the sh pretty damn quickly. 
It's an excellent rotation tool, good for scouting, as her passive also highlights enemies while she's in the air, and one of the best escape tools in the game. You almost can't go wrong with choosing Valkyrie. Bloodhound, A tier in bronze to plat, and A tier in diamond to pred. Wallhacks will never not be strong. I was debating putting him in A tier for the lower ranks and B tier for diamond and beyond, but I couldn't justify the lower ranking. Despite not being as objectively powerful as Seer, a confident Bloodhound with a controller in their hands and a monster energy running down their chin can be pretty damn unstoppable. His ultimate is still amazing, offering frequent scans and insane movement speed. Pair this with his decent passive of being able to see where enemies have been, and his Q, and you've got a legend that has been extremely solid for years now, and will continue to be so in the future. Next up, at the very top of A tier, we have the beefy boy Newcastle. A tier in bronze to plat, S tier in diamond to pred. The all round strength of his kit is exceptional, offering an improved lifeline res where he can literally scoot around with speed and a shield while he resurrects his teammates. On top of that, he has a movable barrier that can also be controlled while resing. And if that's not enough, you can save your teammates shitty positioning by superhero jumping onto their head and placing a very tanky barrier in the process. He's the king of getting teammates back up and saving them from their own giga brain plays. I've placed him in S tier for the higher ranks, as that increased game and spatial awareness from a more skilled player is what he really needs to take him to the next level. If you want a legend that plays as a protector for the entire team, then there really is no legend better than Newcastle. S tier. Horizon. S tier in bronze to plat and S tier in diamond to pred. Horizon is a powerful solo carry legend who also brings a lot to the team. A passive is one of the most enjoyable passives to use in the game. It feels like a huge quality of life benefit that every legend should have because it's just so fun and effective to use. Having no fall stun can come massively in clutch in so many different situations and affords you a much faster and smoother traversal around just about everywhere in the game. Horizon's tactical has seen nerfs in the past but still holds its own as one of the best movement abilities in the current meta, allowing you to get to any high ground with ease. It also works exceptionally well as a tool to push a team off high ground or take the fight to the team, removing their height advantage. Combine this with her ultimate, Black Hole, and you've got what is easily the best wombo combo legend in the game. If you're looking for a high skill cap, fast moving legend who has a place in every team comp, pick Horizon. And our final legend, Seer. Seer wasn't in the meta for a long time despite his insane power. I tried to warn you when no one would play him. I showed you his power. You can't say I didn't tell you so. Seer is S tier in bronze to plat and S tier in diamond to pred. Seer is one of the nuttiest legends in the game. The amount of power and potential he brings through every aspect of his kit really is unmatched. The fact that he has what is effectively permanent enemy presence detection means he would likely be up here in S tier even if his only ability was his passive. Combine this with his tactical, allowing him to not only reveal and briefly track enemies behind any wall or structure, but also interrupt any resurrections or healing being attempted. Catapults him even further into let's call it S plus tier. And we haven't even spoken about his ultimate yet. His ultimate is on a measly two minute cooldown and allows him to see and track every enemy within an area of over 3300 square meters. Enough said. Thank you guys for watching. If you think any legends should be higher or lower than where I've placed them, let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have a good day wherever you are in the world. Oi! If you enjoyed that video, watch this next one. And don't forget to follow on Twitch, links in the description. I'll see you there.